We have an update in the most recent accusations of anti-Semitism directed toward presidential candidate RFK Jr., this time for a tweet in which he used the so-called uh, 1488, the 14 words that are a part of uh, Nazi, um, uh, Nazi, like a lingo that is known for people within that community, and 88 uh, standing for HH. The eighth letter of the alphabet is H, Heil Hitler. He gave a response to Jimmy Dore in a recent interview explaining what he had to say and what he thought of these accusations and whether they were in good faith. Let's take a listen. Those numbers came from came from Gavin De Becker, who runs the, you know, the most, uh, the, you know, the premier security agency in the country. And he was, um, he did my the negotiations with the Secret Service and the Secret Service you know, his first contact with them was whatever, 88 days prior to mm -hmm. the, uh, the, you know, I think it was the 21st of July or whatever, when Mayorkas wrote me back. And so those numbers I got from him, I didn't, you know, invent those numbers. Um, and uh, but but, you know, it's what's ironic about this, Jimmy, is that these are people who have been accusing me of being a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> Uh, so notably in that section, he did not get into some of the claims that there, the, the, the numbers themselves, the 14 and the 88, didn't actually track to the amount of time that had passed uh, since he had made his request for uh, personal security, the likes of which is allotted to presidential candidates uh, after a certain time of them being in the race. Then we have a little bit more of that clip. Let's take a look. Maybe one out of every 20, 25 um, comments. Okay, I'm guessing. And I think if you went on there, particularly during certain periods, are people saying, you better wear a bulletproof uh -huh. vest. You better not go near the grassy knoll. You better, you know, they're going to kill you, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because of my family history, so you have a broad swath of the American public who understands that, yeah, there is a risk for me in doing this enterprise, and yet somehow somebody in the White House has uh, has made a determination that um, it's not, that's not a risk. And I get death threats all the time, I, you know, which is not unusual for me. I've gotten those all of my life, and I get you know very very sort of violent. Um, uh, menacing uh, communications from the public. So, you know, the issue of him being denied Secret Service protection is, you know, almost something else. Uh, I think it's very fair for him to, you know, be concerned about that. Um, what did you make of his explanation but for the, but the, the... But the issue with that is that the fact check says that Secret Service protection isn't allotted until... Uh, I think it's 140 or something like that days before the election, which would have been this time next year. Right. Uh, so he seems to be, have been confused about that, and there wasn't any correction in that in, at the time on, on Jimmy Dore's show. I'm not sure if Jimmy was aware of that or not, but it would have been good to see him confront the allegations that he simply is wrong and that this isn't a conspiracy to deny him Secret Service protection. It's simply that he misunderstood when that Secret Service t protection usually attaches. So that's that part of it. Um, to the, the first part of it, I think it's a little frustrating to not hear the criticism that, yes, 1488, it might just be too, sometimes there's coincidences, it might just be two random numbers, and of course it would be unfair to smear him over two random numbers, and that's of course what he was told by um, this uh, mega donor, um, uh, Gavin, Gavin De Becker, who was of course in the news for contributing about half of his uh, huge election pool uh, to, to his super PAC. But the, 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 the thing that has made so many people skeptical about the 1488 and think it's not just a coincidence is that it was not, in fact, 88 days since he made the request for Secret Service. It had, in fact, been something like 57 days. So the question now becomes, OK, we speculated earlier this week, was it just the person who was writing the tweet who was injecting these numbers? Maybe he was being undermined by someone on the campaign. Now that he's pulled Gavin De Becker into this, this billionaire donor, is it the case that Gavin, Gavin De, Be De Becker purposefully or accidentally put well, out this 88 number when it wasn't in fact either did he was he just 
unaware that the number 88 wasn't the number of days since he had made the request? Or is now the implication shifting to him as being the one that's purposefully injecting this kind of Nazi? I, I mean, the, the if thing. anyone injected Nazism, it was the person who wrote the tweet. But I, that's I think not what be, RFK Jr. is saying. RFK Jr. is specifically saying in that te- in that clip that the 88 number came from Gavin De Becker. Well, right, but, but let's say Gavin De Becker, whoever this person is, wanted you know wanted to get those not like. How did he? How would he have known RFK Jr. was going to tweet and it, a single tweet containing both of those numbers? Right? It's that's so far fetched to me to think that he told him that so that he would put that in a tweet. I think that's totally ridiculous. I think that's absurd on its face. The person, if anyone did this, is the person who wrote the tweet. Campaigns, especially insurgent campaigns, can be very small. This person, Gavin De Becker, I mean, he's contributed substantially, overwhelmingly, uh, uh, to uh, his campaign, to RFK Jr.'s campaign. Of the $9.8 million uh, he's reported to have uh, solicited, $5 million came from Timothy Mellon, as we discussed, a longtime GOP donor who gave uh, $1.5 million to a Trump-aligned group last fall. Um, And most of the rest of the Super PAC's funding through the end of June came from Gavin De Becker, an author and consultant who reported giving the group $4.5 million. Now, it it does not, I'm sorry, it does not seem implausible to me that someone who has that much financial support of a campaign isn't giving, uh, given access and input into the tweets that should be put out and the messaging that should be put out and draft messages. We have been talking at length about RFK Jr.'s relationship with Rabbi Shmuley and the extent to which his talking points around Israel-Palestine seem to be copied and pasted from, as Marianne put it— he got the 88 it, number from this guy. But f- for this to have any kind of um, potential Nazi undertones, it has to have the 14 well, and the 88. Well, that's not true. The HH, the, the 14, the 88 is used I mean, I, I, I was born in 1988. I, 88 is my, my, my birth date is 8888. Yes, like, well, it's, that's. It's not, that's I, the, I'm not, I, I could tweet, I'm not like, these are not Nazi <laughs> undertones, it's just like reality. No, of course. It doesn't, and, and no, the, I don't think it has the weight unless it's paired with the 14, and he didn't, and that was just in the tweet. It, it's not, he didn't say he got the, four, the Gavin DeBecker told him it was a 14-day turnaround for, I, I, if you want to patently dismiss this, you can patently dismiss this. I'm interested in talking about why people might be skeptical. And the reason people might be skeptical is that it didn't say 888. It didn't say 888888. It said, didn't say 8. It said two eights, which, separate apart from 14, absolutely is a no Nazi symbol. Now, you can, 88 does come up naturally, but the question is why th- this person is giving, Gavin De Becker is giving an 88 number when, and this is a crucial point that no one is engaging with, it wasn't 88 days. It was not 88 days. It's a number that's being pulled out of the ether. So is Gavin, is Gavin De Becker going to say, oh, I misunderstood, it wasn't 88 days, or this is the point at which we were calculating from that gave us the 88 number? Okay, fine. But I, that's what I would have liked to see come out in this interview. And I'm not bringing this up to say I know that this is uh, intentional, but these are the kinds of questions that if asked could have helped clarify things and exculpate RFK Jr. Unfortunately, he hasn't spoken to the actual issue that's causing causing people to be suspicious, which is where did these numbers come from? That's all I'm saying. I think that we need to have some reporting out or an explanation from the people that he's now said were involved, like Gavin DeBecker mm-hmm. or himself. Why did we get these numbers? Who drafted the tweet? You well, know, that would have been, it would be helpful to know, literally, who wrote the yeah. tweet, and is that person aware that yeah. if you stick fourteen eight eight in a tweet, it will make some people think you're gesturing yeah. at. And did that stuff. person have any, you know, contact with right. Gavin uh, De Becker or his team? And, and did, was he involved at all in providing language for the tweet? I mean, this is the, that. If you wanted to get rid of this, that's the way to do it. That's that's the way to clean the slate. And that's why sometimes journalists can be very helpful to politicians if they ask the right questions and get the right stuff out on the record. I think we're still waiting for that to assume that people. Look, the reality is there are a lot of bad faith actors who are never going to take RFK Jr. seriously and believed any number of smears of anti-Semitism that I think were not substantiated and true. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, and they're never going to be convinced no matter what he says about this. And so I I understand that some of his perhaps blasé attitude in the interview with um, uh, Jimmy Dore might have been because he doesn't feel like there's any purpose in actually trying to prove himself. But I do think there's some other people on the left who are genuinely invested in his campaign, interested in him as an anti-war candidate and the like, but are concerned that he is 
getting huge donations from Trump aligned super PACs when Trump himself has shown an openness to sitting down with self described neo Nazis like uh, Nick Fuentes, whether or not he knew it, at a certain point, you're swimming in waters where there's a lot of Nazis and there's some questions about why you didn't get out of the pool. And so people want some assurances. People on the left who are very much anti-Nazi want some assurances that the kind of donations that you're getting and the kind of affiliations that you have aren't going to affect the policy direction and the leadership choices that you make in the context of your, your campaign or your ultimate administration. Yeah, I think even more simply, you should just be really cognizant of who is tweeting on your behalf and make sure they know what they're doing. That too. More rising right after this.